Welcome to Raleigh, where North Carolina State finds its season on the brink. The Wolfpack needs to win both remaining games to become bowl eligible. And today, number seven, Clemson is in town. The Tigers have already punched their ticket to the ACC title game, with the season highlighted by comeback wins. From the left hand, shotgun look. Boyd drops the throw, fires toward the end zone. Leaping grab, Wayne Allen. I couldn't think of a better place to end the street than Death Valley. Kick is away. Sammy Watkins field has a seam to the right. And a rabbit is loose. And the Tigers bolt back in front. Adam Zero now going to try it. Kick is on the way. It's good. And the Clemson Tigers come from 14 down and pull out a three-point win. Today, the Cardiac Cats look for their first 10-win season in over two decades against a desperate home team. It's the ACC on ESPN. Clemson knows it's in the ACC title game already. Then perhaps a BCS bowl game. To make any bowl game, North Carolina State needs to win today and win again next week in its home finale. Good afternoon, everybody. Mike Patrick, Craig James. It's great to have you with us. Freshman star receiver Sammy Watkins, who may be the best player in the country, probably isn't going to play today. But don't feel too bad for the Tigers. They have the ACC's number one offense. They also lead the conference in score. I got excited about this Clemson football team from the get-go because they were explosive. They believed in themselves. Yes, they're in the championship game, but they have to get back on track and get that offense going again. They have to become explosive again if they want to finish the season like they want to. This is a football team that scores a lot of points. They have lots of yards per game, multiple people to throw the football to. They throw it down the field deep. They throw the ball short. Just a Sam and Watkins might not play in this ball game, but that doesn't mean they don't have guys who can step up. Taj Boyd has to find those receivers and get the ball to them. I think it's a very important ball game. We saw this Clemson team lose, lose at Georgia Tech. Yep. You and I did that football game. They've got to get that confidence back with their offense in this football game. NC State, the formula very simple today. Have any chance at a bowl, you've got to beat Clemson. And in that Georgia Tech game, Georgia Tech's defense came out and I thought hit Clemson in the mouth from the get-go. Yeah. NC State's defense the last couple of weeks has been outstanding. They played very well. That's not the problem with their football team. Their offense is their problem. So today, the NC State defense has to step up. They have to get after Taj Boyd, just like Georgia Tech got after Taj Boyd, if they're to have any chance of competing for this game. Absolutely, Craig. A game with a lot of meeting today from Raleigh, Clemson, and NC State. Is the Wolfpack ready for the challenge of taming the Tigers? It's a huge game for our program to get to a bowl game. We have to win this one and one more. And I think it's just being small in the field. You know, sometimes I know receivers do before they do it. You know, speed kills. So I think it's going to be fun for me. I'm, I'm going to enjoy it. NC State takes the field here in Raleigh. They have had a very up and down year to say the least. They did revive their season by winning three of four, including a shutout win over rival North Carolina two weeks ago. The fifth time in a row they've beaten the Tar Heels. But then last week they fell at Boston College. Now the collective back of the Wolfpack is against the wall. Today they hope to shock the Clemson Tigers and keep the fading bold dreams alive. Kickoff moments away from Carter Finley Stadium. Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh, North Carolina, the site for our game today between Clemson and North Carolina State. Beautiful day and a good crowd. In his third full year, Dabo Sweeney has built an ACC powerhouse, already clinching a spot in the conference title game and looking for the school's first 10 win season in over 20 years. The Wolfpack's many injuries have ruined Tom O'Brien's vision for his fifth season in Raleigh a year ago, or a year with a lot of promise, rather, has turned into a fight to stay above the 500 mark. 
And the fight will continue today against a really good Clemson ball club. Clemson wins the toss. They have deferred until the second half. Yeah, I think for Tom O'Brien, this is a ball game to where his team has to start fast. I mean, it, it's been up and down, roller coaster here, down, and, and the loss to Boston College really stung this program. They thought maybe they'd turn the corner a little bit after beating North Carolina. So yeah. this is a very important ball game for this for this uh, Wolfpack team. They got to start fast. Both quarterbacks getting ready. Boyd has certainly had the better of it statistically. But he has struggled a little bit in the last couple of games. He'll be tested today against Mike Archer's defense back there with John Tenuta helping with it. I mean, this is a this again. This is a game for Clemson. The Clemson Tigers, number seven team in the country. They got to play like that. Let's get back to that. You know, I want to see that explosiveness happen to their offense. T.J. Graham, third in the ACC, is the deep man. He waits at the goal line. From the four-yard line. Graham takes it up shy of the 25. Wolfpack quarterback Mike Glennon has slumped the last three games. He has four interceptions, only one touchdown pass, with an average of just 170 yards in the air. Numbers like that are not going to beat the Clemson Tigers. He has to be better. He has the talent. He has the arm, and he has the speed at wide receiver to make the plays down the field, but it has to happen down the field. Can't be short today. James Washington, the running back with him, and Washington will get the handoff on the delay. Out to the 26-yard line. Let's take a look at today's impact players. Brought to you by Chick-fil-A. All right, George Bryant's the school's all-time leading tight end receiver ever. They have to get him involved underneath so that they can stretch this Clemson defense with T.J. Graham. Graham's a guy, last time you and I were here, Mike, we kept saying, get him the ball deep, get it in his hands. You see the all-purpose yards, yards after catch are outstanding. And then Cody sends the ball. He's playing very well in that Clemson secondary. He'll have a chance to pick some balls if they're thrown up for grabs. Play action fake. Glennon on a roll. He'll keep it. Gets out of bounds. Chased out by Malachi Goodman. And one of the problems for NC State's offense, they have not been able to run the ball effectively this year. 111th in the country out of 120 teams. Only 102 yards a game. And 102 yards a game doesn't scare anybody. Uh, and, you know, Clemson gives up 188 on the ground. So whether it's a combination of the quarterback and the tailback or the tailback by himself, NC State has to be able to run the football to give them some kind of balance. Logan Winkles, the big fullback, number 44, to the left of Glennon on third and long. Blitz coming. Glennon has time, throws underneath. Excellent coverage out there. And that sense of eye who can take a receiver out of the ball game, just blanket coverage, able to bat it down. And it will be three and out for North Carolina State. Yeah, this is just a great job of sense of eye, knowing the route, knowing the down and distance, defending the, the first down marker. He's in there with it, reaches with his hand, without touching the receiver, knocks the ball away. Will Ballman will punt. DeAndre Hopkins, a dangerous returner, is deep. Low line drive, returnable kick. But good coverage downfield. Only a three-yard return after a punt of 43. Brandon Bishop, one of the safeties down on special teams, makes a good stop. Clemson quarterback Taj Boyd, 27 touchdown passes this year. One more will set a new school record, but he's thrown four of his seven interceptions in the last two games. And Sammy Watkins, with that bad shoulder, starts the game on the bench. Boyd on a roll. Hopkins up near midfield. DeAndre Hopkins, who figures to be the target, the prime target of Taj Boyd today, without Watkins, picks up 17 yards. Yeah, Hopkins had a really big game against North Carolina early in the season. Nine catches, 157 yards. No Sammy Watkins on the field. The tempo and the pace will still be the same, but other receivers getting the big yards. Bellamy with a run off the right side. There is a marker down near the line of scrimmage, however. 
Offsides, defense, penalties decline. They turned First down the foul. Second down. down. Where they have Second the down. Let's take a look at today's impact players brought to you by Chick fil A. Well, the other school has a tight end as well. Dwayne Allen, Clemson. Boy, is he good. Just two away from having the school's record. Andre Ellington on the ground running the football has to have a good game. They're glad to have him back. Option to Ellington. NC State plays it beautifully. The tackle made by the safety, Brandon Bishop, who had outside responsibility with the pitch man and was right there. Ellington was missing in that Georgia Tech game that you and I called. And his backups put the ball on the ground, and that's what cost them. Second down, call it 14 yards. Flanker screen or third down. And they got it out to Humphreys, and Humphreys. No, I think they're complete. saying that ball bounced off the ground. Out to the receiver. I think it's going to bring up fourth down. That's an incomplete it pass. Is incomplete. Yeah, yeah. Just, just skipped the grass before it got to the receiver. So here's, Clemson has to send on the punt team. Yeah, here's a look at that ball. It just, you know, it, it, that's a nice job calling it on the field. Brown helped him make the catch. And that is a good start for NC State's defense. Sure is. A lot of confidence. They came in this game wanting to hit him in the mouth early. Zimmerman to kick to Graham. One of the good things for NC State, they're starting to get some injured players back along that defensive line. Beautiful high kick, but about five yards too far into the end zone. 44-yard punt, but a net of only 24. NC State will start at the 20 when we come back to Raleigh. No score early in this ball game. 12:38 to go, first quarter. NC State with its second possession. They'll start from their own 20. Three and out the first time they had the ball behind Mike Glennon. Washington sets up seven yards deep. And Washington will get the football. Picks up four, driving forward maybe five. And thanks to PA Sports, here's Craig with the James game. Yeah, we got a couple of really talented tight ends playing in this football game. And today, very important for Clemson without Sammy Watkins for Dwayne Allen to step up. He's really good. And the same thing happens for NC State. They have to get George Bryan involved in the ball game. On top of that, though, for especially for NC State, they can't play in a box. They've got to stretch this football field. They have to challenge Clemson down the field at some point today with the speed of T.J. Graham and others. They go with three wide receivers. Graham comes back in motion. Their tight end, Brian, is on this side. They'll go to Graham on a flank or screen. Trying to get a block. Stiff arms. The defender goes right over top of him. Out to the 31. Right. Rashad Breland got leveled. Yeah, leveled by T.J. Graham, six feet, 180. He's a strong player. He got up underneath. That that right there is the is the definition of leverage. Ooh. When you get underneath, that was a pretty violent stiff arm. And I'm sure though that Breland, he'll look for payback yes, somewhere in this ball game. Third and a yard. Washington. First down. Brandon Thompson. Who was third on this team in tackles as a down lineman made the stop. Andre Branch, also a down lineman, second on the team in tackles. Virtually unheard of in today's game, but these guys are special. We sat with Paul Johnson a couple of weeks ago before the Clemson Georgia Tech game, and he told us, sitting in his office, we have to play keep away Clemson's offense. They wanted to limit Clemson to 10 possessions, not the 18 or 19 they usually have. They were successful that day with only 11 or 12 possessions by Clemson. That's the same model NC State needs to try to emulate. Of course, Georgia Tech is built for that with that option offense. Washington picks up a couple here. NC State not as much, but if they can do it, it would be huge for them. Right. You know what? There's a model out there that you have to try to aspire to have. NC State's offense has not been good. Their defense is playing well, so that's what they that's what we'll keep an eye on to see if they can do it. If they can run the ball, it would be a revelation for them after being 111th in rushing to this point in the season. Glennon, 
flanker screen. Got it out to Underwood, and Underwood is stuffed in a hurry as Clemson reacts rapidly to it. And Underwood, with his 14th catch, is taken down by Martin Jenkins, who plays a lot of nickel for this club. Yeah, that's on Underwood, though. He's got to get north. He's got to run. He's got to be moving. There's a flag on the play. Came down after the play was over, it appeared. Our referee Tom Zamorski. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. 84 the offense. 15 yards from the end of the run. Be third down. Craig, North Carolina State is not good enough to survive those kind of mistakes. And that's your two-time all-conference tight end, George Bryant. Yeah, that's, you know, it's, it's away from the football. Uh, the play that was made. I, I I think any coaching staff likes aggressive play coming out, trying to send a message to their opponent, but it has to be smart. I always had it. Raymond Berry coached us in New England. He always preached that you have to be smart and tough. And that does and, and, and being smart and tough they have to work together. They've been very good in the penalty department this year, but not there. Now it's third and a mile. Glennon under pressure. Set up perfectly for Clemson. Malachi Goodman. Third and 17, you go back, sit in the pocket. You are a perfect target for that Clemson pass rush. That's not a good start for Mike Glennon. Mike Glennon has to get rid of this football. Look at him. He stops looking downfield. He's looking at white jerseys. He's not looking at options down the field. He's not looking to think to get rid of the football. There has to be an instinct. Mike Glennon has played enough football this season. He's got to get rid of that ball. Well, you try to block Thompson. You try to block Branch. You can't stop everybody, and Goodman gets there. Fourth and 36. DeAndre Hopkins, a late fair catch signal, muffed it. And NC State got it back. How about that? Well, now they say recovered by Clemson. And the Wolfpack fans can't believe it. NC State for If it hit an NC State player on the way down, which is what is being told to us, it's illegal touching. That's the. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Zach Gentry is down there, and I don't know that that clearly hit Gentry or not. Haven't seen it yet. And now the crowd's going crazy. And now the officials are going to stop it and take a good, good, good couple more looks to review this. It would be illegal touching, and the ball would be Clemson's. The NC State coach is challenging the ruling on the field that the ball was not touched. So Tom O'Brien takes it into his own hands. has to be indisputable video evidence to overturn the call on the field. It and didn't hit him in the upper body. May have hit his foot. It, does the football get redirected? That, that's what you got to look for. Slowing it down. Slowing it down to see if it's redirected. I thought Gentry did a great job of getting out of the way. I'm not... Watch his right hand. I, I, I didn't uh, see the right hand. It could be the right foot. Well, since we're arguing about it, it's not going to be indisputable video evidence. And they ruled that it touched an NC State player on the way down. So they're not going to overturn this. Yeah, we've magnified, blown it up for you. There's no hand touch there. Maybe it's the foot. The foot. I think the foot. But if it was his foot, the ball would have come through Hopkins' hands before it got there. Does it touch Hopkins' hands before it goes to the foot? Did the, did the, did the, the, the off the fingertips push it to the foot? Well, again, and that's your point. There. Again, then it's we're a talking fumble. about so many different things that may or may not have been. It, it, it seems obvious now that Clemson is going to get the football, but how close was that? Hopkins with that late call. I like Tom Zamorski. 
the official the referee today that lets us know what they're looking for and what the challenge is all about. Does it hit the fingertips of Hopkins. Mm. Man, I don't see how Can't it couldn't tell. have. I don't see how it couldn't have. His hand folds. I yeah. mean, it, it. But you can't suppose or assume. Well, you're not supposed to. Remember, the definition of indisputable is even if I've got some skin in the game, I can't. I can't agree with you if it's indisputable. I can't disagree with you. Yeah. I, I, I make it a practice not to disagree with you anyway. Because Thank you very much. <laughs> the IQ of that is <laughs> find myself nice. on the losing end. <laughs> now one of the reasons they tend to take more time is if they have to also spot the ball. But they should have had that done when they called the illegal touch. Yeah, but that's the kind of play, though, that NC State needs to go their way. Absolutely. To win this game. I mean, they're playing the number seven team in the country. And to upset them, you've got to have big plays in special teams. Big plays. Because it, this offense has not shown the ability to make the explosiveness that you have to have to win a big game. I think either way they called this on the field it's going to have to stand. I don't think you can look at these replays and say it's indisputable anyway one way or another. But apparently the officials are uh, really mulling this over. Well that's one of the things that I believe needs to change in the replay college football. There needs to be a clock on it. If you've taken this long you got to get come on out let's play the football game. Well again back to the original point I made if you've taken this long you're having a question over what happened and what didn't happen which makes it not indisputable. Three and a half minutes at this point now this delay and I just don't like it. No at some point you got to you got to call it one way or another. You think. <laughs> well. <laughs> that might be that might be open to interpretation too. We could be here a while. I had to go with that, Mike. I could. I, I, I don't couldn't blame you. I don't blame you. I love you, man. I I'm, to, I'm reaching here. <laughs> that, was, that was laid up for me. <laughs> My first assist of the season. <laughs> After further review, the ruling on the field stands. NC State is charged with a timeout and has lost the opportunity to challenge for the remainder of the game. Well, that's what hurts NC State. Yeah, stands means that they, they couldn't come up with video evidence to overturn it. And, and so. This is a game that Tom O'Brien needs for his ball club. They've played two non-FBS schools. You can only count one of those wins, so they have to win the next two games to be bowl eligible. That would have been a big break for them. Clemson takes over and Boyd throws on the flanker screen to Humphreys. Humphreys filling in for Sammy Watkins and he's taken down by Bishop. You know these wide receiver screens right now are working extremely well for Clemson. It's the toss sweep. It's picking up five six yards at a time. Now you've got to get NC State's secondary to be a little bit more aggressive. Read through that and get to the receiver. Option read and Taj Boyd very close to the first down sticks. McKay friends in the tackle for NC State. Going against Excuse me, it was closer to the marker, not the end of the stick. Going against this Clemson offense, they try to snap the ball 80 times a game. Chad Morris, their offensive coordinator, high tempo, high energy, very challenging for the defense to get lined up properly. Third and about five. Boyd with time over the middle. Going to get a first down out of it on the toss to the backup tight end Brandon Ford who they think has a tremendous future when Dwayne Allen moves on to the NFL. Yeah Brandon Ford in speaking to some of the coaches here at Clemson they think that maybe he's a better receiver than Dwayne Allen got a couple more inches than him maybe a little bit taller but he's a certainly a fantastic player but that goes in with line with what I've said there are a lot of good players on this Clemson offense Aren't just there? spread it around. Just tremendous skill levels. No word on what this delay is, but it is a first down Clemson at the 30. Ellington 
Straight up the middle to the 10. Gain of 15 for Andre Ellington. Uh, you know, Ellington's just one of those players that when he's in this offense, he makes such a difference because of his speed and vision. Boy, did they miss him against Georgia Tech in that loss. Ellington picks up almost five more. Yeah, that previous run, we've got to go quick with these replays because of the tempo of the offense. But watch how the offensive line were able to come out and fit on. Audie Cole, 42, middle linebacker, got caught up inside. They've got to have better safety support in the box against the run to stop Ellington. Boyd sets blocked at the line of scrimmage. Knocked down by Brian Slay, number 55. Used that 6-3 frame to get his hands up in a hurry when he couldn't get pressure. Yeah, these coaches here at NC State are very smart. Mike Archer, they, they, they coach him up, man. Hey, get your hands up in the passing lanes when you see it and you can't get to the quarterback. There's nothing Archer and Tenuta haven't seen. Boyd on the keeper. Nothing doing. He'll lose a couple. That's a heck of a stand by NC State. J.R. Sweezy, another young man coming back from injury, was in on the tackle. Watch the speed of the defensive line coming off the blocks. You see that getting in the backfield. That's how you stop the, the running game. Penetration in the backfield. Catanzaro, who had the game winner a week ago, comes on to try from 24 yards out. And it's 3-0 Clemson. But for NC State, Craig, that's a win, isn't it? It's a win now. Now, can Mike Lennon in this offense, Michael Bryant, uh, Tom O'Brien's got to get Mike Lennon going. That's up to the offensive coordinator, Dana Bible. Come on, Danny, you got to make some calls down the field. ESPN's College Football on ABC, brought to you by K Jewelers, the number one jewelry store in America. Every kiss begins with K. Jeep. Visit Jeep.com to learn more. And the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. The legendary Jim Valvano, who of course led the Wolf Pack to a national championship, Jimmy V. Week coming up. It's a great chance to, to contribute to the V Foundation and the fight against cancer. One of the most inspirational nights, the picture from Jimmy V from that speech, where he said, never give up, never give up. Mm. T.J. Graham, deep to receive. A couple of more kickoff returns. He will own the all-time record at North Carolina State. Driven two yards deep. And he says, I'd rather start at 20. It's an important start for North Carolina State, I think, on those first two series against that powerful Clemson offense, be able to hold them to three points. Well, you know, getting points against this team and starting fast. I mean, they've got to find a way to move down the field, and it can't be in this box that I've talked about. We, we, we need to watch the head of Mike Glennon. We need to see if Mike Glennon's looking downfield for coverage or is he seeing white jerseys in front of him. Spread the field with four wide receivers. Want to set up the screen. And they got it to Crazy. Normally, people do not screen against Clemson because they're so good against it. But that one picked up 14 yards. Let's go to Robert Flores. Robert? All right, Mark. Taco Bell Studio update. Penn State clinches the Big Ten Leaders Division with a win and a Wisconsin loss. They're on top early. Stephon Green opening drive, 39 yards. It's 7-0 Penn State over Ohio State at the shoot. Mm, man, enormous game there. Again, spread the field with four wide receivers. Washington, the running back. Or Crazy. And Crazy up the middle to the 41 yard line. Red shirt freshman, six feet, 196 pounds. Stefan Anthony made the tackle. Dana. Consensus top 15 recruit linebacker. Offensive coordinator Dana Bible is the guy who's been around football a long time. A really good football coach. He always says that early in a football game, it's up to him. It's his responsibility to find the right fit and feel in a football game and to call the plays accordingly. You see right now, he's moving the ball outside with the screens, coming back inside with Creasy. 
Second and about three. Crazy again near the sticks and if they mark it at the 44 it will be a first down Courtney Brown number 90 was in on the tackle for Clemson they are desperately trying to establish something on the ground and at least on this possession they've done it you know you and I followed NC State we followed Tom O'Brien more particularly for a long time yes sir he likes to run the ball there's no doubt about that but I've, I've had the feeling this year that they, they need to really throw it to set the run up Crazy goes out on the pattern this time, and they'll throw to him. And Crazy with a good hard run down to the 46 before he is blasted out of bounds by Rashad or Bashad Breland. And you know what I like about Glennon right now is he's looking down the field and he's waiting at the last second and then he's dropping it off. He's immediately going to his check down. And, and that's a good thing because that's going to eventually pull these corners up and it's going to open up some of the corner routes and the deeper ball. Washington back in. Tries the left side for about three yards. Yeah, they do run the ball better at the house, don't they? You know, when, when you talked about NC State and, and the rushing, a, a, a tremendous difference. Ooh. Five yards a carry when they're here at home and the six touchdowns, and they've got a good balance going right now. Uh, it's it's absolutely a good balance, and and uh, it's going to help Mike Glennon get into the game himself. Two yards on the road average is not going to beat anybody, and this time Washington just thrown back. As he got to the line of scrimmage, Andre Branch led the charge for the Tiger defense. And a Branch has 60 tackles on the season, a, a very talented athletic player. He's ninth in the country in sacks, number one in the ACC. Thompson going off on a good sign. That guy has 59 tackles. I mean, yeah, it, they, it's one of their other great players they, there. They have been remarkable up front. We'll check on Thompson if we can get a report from the Clemson sideline. Third and long here for NC State. As they try to at least get in the field goal range. Four man rush. Glennon forced out of the pocket and down he goes. You just can't stand back there and wait. And Courtney Brown gets gets him for the second time on the pass rush. Now this is a this is a glaring example of what NC State's missing in Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson used to pull them out on plays like this and it's a first down and they're going down the field. NC State's offense has struggled. Everybody knew they would struggle without Russell Wilson. It's hard to do a game right now without pointing that out. I mean Mike Lennon has sure. this skill set but it's he's not Russell Wilson. Ballman to punt to DeAndre Hopkins. Signals for the fair catch. At the 12 yard line, 33 yard kick, no return. 3 0 ball game, first quarter in Rollin. The American Music Awards live tomorrow night, 8 7 Central on ABC, the one place to see all your favorite artists, such as Katy Perry, Jennifer Lopez, Lil Wayne, Taylor Swift, and Pitbull. It's music's biggest night. Live. That's Chad Morris, offensive coordinator. Talk about him here in just a minute, man. This offense, they like to run a lot of snaps. Ellington just got back to the line of scrimmage. And he's a very unusual story, too, Craig, because his background almost exclusively high school football in Texas. Yeah, just a year removed from it, but he was at Tulsa, and whenever Dabble Swinney was looking for a coordinator, he wanted someone who could run it and throw it. And this young, and this uh, coach knew how to connect with the young players. Tulsa was one of the most balanced offenses in the country. Ellington in the flat, but run down after a short game by Dante Johnson. Boy, NC State really hustling on defense. And, and, th and those are the numbers right there. When you when you look at Tulsa, what they were doing, the yards per play, very important. At six five and six two at the very end, that, that, that's moving the chains. Mike Archer said, you know, with all these spread offenses, not a lot of fun to be a defensive coach these days. Blitz coming. That's going to be short. 
Yeah, it, but it, it worked. That's Mike Archer. He's, he brought five guys. Audico came from the middle, had one on the outside. It forced a quick throw, which was going to be short of the first down marker. I mean, NC State's defense, we said coming in to this game, Archer and Tanuta, these guys have them playing well, and you can see it right now. Trying to use the same kind of pressure we saw at Georgia Tech, which really threw off the offense. Yep. Graham waits at his 45. Zimmerman to punt. Beautiful kick. Sky high. And a fair catch made near the 42 yard line. Tonight on the ESPN Networks, you can catch four top 10 BCS teams in action. Started off on ESPN 7 Eastern, number one LSU and Old Miss. Then at 8, ESPN and ESPN 3, either have number 5 Oklahoma, number 22 Baylor in the Big 12, or USC and number 4 Oregon in the Pac-12. Check your local listings. And at 10:15, back on ESPN, more action from the Pac-12. Stanford against Cal in the 114th big game. And if you don't think we have surprises anymore, how about last night with Oklahoma State, a four-touchdown favorite, losing. NC State trying to get the offense rolling. This is their best field position so far. Yeah. And Carrico Hawkins makes the tackle on crazy. You see on first down, Clemson really dropping back in coverage. And Glennon doing a heck of a job of waiting, 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 checking it down. We've seen numbers of check downs so far and a wide receiver screen. So the patience of Glennon, I like. Crazy seeing more and more action at running back. He obviously has a burst. Lennon sits in the middle of the pocket and throws behind his receiver. Sensabaugh had a shot at it, almost picked it off. Stephen Howard saw it whistle behind him. That was a poor throw by Glennon, who had time. Yeah, Glennon's got to make that throw. And I, and I know he, he looked, it's, it's almost like he was surprised. He looked back, looked left. He comes back to the right, and it happened on him real quickly. Just a poor throw. That, that has to be completed. When you get a chance to throw the ball down the field and to have the big play, you got to make it. This will bring up a third and five. Clemson showing blitz. They come with it. Glennon in trouble. Throws underneath and incomplete. The pressure was on. The Clemson Tigers brought five, and Andre Branch nearly got there. Uh, you know what? Now, at least on this play, Mike Glennon was able to continue to look down the field. He bails out. Pressure's there. Understand that. But he still is able to throw the ball down the field and avoid the sack. And, and you know, hey, Cody sends the ball. We said in the open this guy was a playmaker, playing extremely well. He's all over the receivers. Bomb and the kick to Hopkins again. Hopkins waits inside his 20. Better kick by Bauman this time. Fair catch the 15. 37 yard kick, no return. Been a defensive battle so far. Now let's take a look at this week's BCS standings brought to you by Vizio. Obviously, there's going to be a shakeup because Oklahoma State was second until last night. Yeah, and now it's, the debate is raging. We had one in our car driving to this game between Alabama and Oregon, who should be number two moving up. Uh, Oklahoma, they lose because Oklahoma State lost. So they're going to lose that real credible opponent. Yeah. Boyd on the keeper. Picks up about seven. But, and, and you know, and, and right now, that's the that's the beauty of November. And we keep saying that's not the final surprise that's going to take place. I mean, we're going to see LSU has to play Arkansas. There, there are some really big games to come. And well, who would have thought last night could have happened? Uh, Iowa State and Paul Rhodes. Paul yeah, Rhodes is a heck right. of a football coach. Yeah, he sure is. He's really made them competitive. NC State comes up on defense again. Tell you what, they got it going on on defense, don't they? Terrell Manning made the tackle on the outside, brings up another third down. And Clemson says, we'll wait till the second quarter. Mike, you think Tom O'Brien would have taken a three to nothing score in a one? In a heartbeat.
seven in that North Carolina State uh, North Carolina State offense has been held in check so far, but Clemson has only put three points on the board. They face a third and three deep in their own territory. NC State likes to read formations. You can see that they've got three linemen down there. They're thinking throw. Ellington, blitz coming, throws, and that ball hit the ground. Incomplete intended for Dwayne Allen, the tight end. Manning had the coverage, and NC State really playing some tough defense right now, and Allen has been restricted by a turf toe this year. All right, he can, so that, maybe that explains why he doesn't come out of this thing here. That's man-to-man -man coverage. He's being pressed on the inside by his coverage man. He's got to move that. He has to move to the sidelines and create separation. It's very difficult for him because of that turf toe. He can't plant the foot and drive off of it. Zimmerman to kick to Graham. Boy, they got some pressure on him that time. Barely got it out of there. Graham, fair catch near the 40. Good field position again for North Carolina State, but can they take advantage of it against Dabo Sweeney's defense? Three nothing, Clemson. Clemson leads by three here in Raleigh, but North Carolina State has the ball first and ten at its own 39-yard line. Washington starts this series as the tailback. And he'll get the carry. Tries the right side. Blockers in front. Washington midfield to the Clemson 45-yard line. Seen some signs from NC State that they are really ready to play today, particularly on defense. And, and I was going to say, they've got to get this running game going. 11 carries, 14 yards, part of that nice pickup right there. But while Clemson's offense is struggling, it's imperative that NC State take advantage of the field position their defense has given them, or else they're going to regret it. Glennon over the middle. Got his tight end down to the 25-yard line that time. They found George Bryan, two-time All-ACC tight end. That's only his 20th catch all year. Yeah, and we talked about this in our EA Sports earlier in the ballgame of how important it is to get George Bryan open. Now we've seen two back-to-back -back throws down the middle of the field where wide receivers were wide open. They got to stay in the middle and make Clemson come cover them. Brian could have left for the NFL a year ago, chose to return for his senior season as a team captain. That was Tobias Palmer. Brewer took him out of bounds. But that's just like the old toss sweep right there. Right? Absolutely. So that's picking up good first down yardage. And, and, and more about George Bryan, the middle of that field. Mike Glennon missed the previous shot down yes, the middle, right? That was a 15-yard game. So Clemson right now really paying attention to the wide receivers getting outside, opening up the middle for balls to be thrown. T.J. Graham is the motion man. They're trying to find a way to get him open. And Washington, nothing this time as Clemson jams it up inside. Carrico Hawkins, the middle linebacker, filled the gap beautifully. And, and, you know, a very, very strong Clemson defense. When you talk to their coaches, Kevin Steele, defensive coordinator, he says that his top 10 or 11, when they're in the game, they're really good. Right now, it's third and long. They've had two sacks in three of these situations. They cannot afford to do it again. Another sack takes them out of field goal range, perhaps. Glennon short set this time, throws the slant. That could have been a flag, and it is. Looked like the defender got there a step early. Richmond Hall, or was it Breland? Pass interference, number 17 of the defense. Ball will be placed to spot the foul. First down. To me, Mike, the most important part of this deal is Glennon gets rid of the football. One, two, three, and he throws it. He has to be aggressive with his throws. When it's there, let it go. You've got to trust that your receiver is going to use his body to shield off the corner. Clemson's going to be there. They're a smart, well-coached defense. you got to go ahead and let it go. First down, NC State at the Clemson 19. Creasy. 
Picks up about three. But you, but you understand why I say that? Because we, you had just pointed out the previous two third and longs were sacks and pressures. And and so you, you, you can't be timid. You got to play with confidence. You got to let the ball go. I'm not talking about throwing it into double coverage, but on that particular play right there, you got a receiver running a slant. His body's between the football, and, and he's going to defend against it. Creasy the tailback on second and seven. Play action fake by Glennon. is tight end wide open. Got it to him down to the 11. Brian came off the line of scrimmage, and you don't expect Glennon on that little half roll, and that helped open it up. Yeah, and, you know, George Bryan here does a nice job of stalling right side. Watch him delay, delay, delay. And then he takes off. That's timing. And it's also a nice job of Glennon getting the football to his tight end. That's Dana Bible, the offensive coordinator. He's moving around this Clemson defense. Inside, inside, outside receiver screens, middle of the field. He's moving around well. They need to reach the nine for a first down. Trying to use motion and formation to confuse this Clemson defense today. Glennon. Looks for Brian again. He was perfectly covered. Somehow he caught it. How the ball got by Jonathan Willard, we may never know, and it's a touchdown NC State. Willard was all over Brian. Craig, I thought for all the world that was going to be a pick. The reason it wasn't, look at the speed and the velocity of this football. You see the spin on that football coming through the air? If that ball is timidly thrown to the outside, it would have been an interception. And it looked like Brian stepped out of bounds. And they review it. The previous play, a ruling of a touchdown is under further review. Uh, big George Bryan stepping up on this drive here. Now, where's the football when his foot step? See, it, it, it has to be indisputable video evidence. Now, right there, you don't know whether or not that ball's across and has broken right. the plane, right? So I would say touchdown, not reversible at that point on that shot. It would be a first down in any case. I think they're going to mark it short. Yeah, but, but what I'm saying, you can't take it away from them right there, Mike, because you don't know where that football Go was. Back to the, if we can see the previous replay, wait until the ball does cross the plane. Well, it Enough has to be angle. indisputable. And, and right there, you can't conclusively say that the, where the ball was at the, at the time, it's bang, bang. Any way you look at it. Now for Clemson, they have to be prepared. They have to be prepared to get back on the field and get some penetration against this offense. From that angle, the ball, it may be half of a football short, but back to your point, I don't know that they can turn it over on that. Glennon, so far on this drive, four for four, 38 yards. Now watch where the ball eventually ends up, if we can keep it rolling. It just crosses the plane there. So I think I think from that replay, you can safely say it was short, but I don't know if it's indisputable. I just hope they make a decision sooner rather than later. Well, I go back to my earlier point. You got to make a decision one way or another, right? <laughs> and low and bold, here it comes. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. The ruling on the field makes it so important. That's your default position. Video evidence not indisputable. And uh, that was a, a, a good job by the replay officials getting it back down to the field and let's get this game moving on. And what a huge play for the NC State offense. That series, they went 61 yards to take the lead on Clemson. After what we saw last night with Oklahoma State and Iowa State, anything is possible. Well, now Clemson offense has a little wake-up call. Mike Glennon and NC State has done their part. Now will we see this Clemson offense that's so powerful step up? ESPN.
Clemson's College Football on ABC. Brought to you by AT&T. Get it faster with 4G. Rethink possible. For the fifth straight year, NC State is holding a Toys for Tots drive. Today's fans were encouraged to bring a toy to the game. Tom O'Brien is on the national board for the Marine Corps, the to Marine Corps Toys for Tots program. His Wolfpack will make a shopping trip soon to buy toys with the money donated to the program. The thought of a child not having a toy at Christmas is simply unimaginable. It is sad, isn't it? Yeah. Way to go, guys. And Tom O'Brien, of course, a Marine Corps vet after graduating from the Navy. Clemson on the return, but only to the 16-yard line. Sharon Peak taken down. Let's go to the studio. Robert Flores. Robert? All right, Mike, Penn State, Stephon Green has two touchdowns, and the Nittany Lions are up on Ohio State in Columbus, 17-7. Nittany Lions can clinch the Big Ten Leaders Division with a win and a Wisconsin loss. Meantime, Houston, number 11 in the BCS, leading SMU at home, 6-0. Clemson starting inside its 20 for the third straight time. Boyd, under pressure, hit from behind, the ball's out. Recovered by NC State. Deep Pat back. Norman knocked it away. Manning recovered. Now the question will be, was he trying to throw it or was he hit before his arm came forward? Well, the referee threw the bean back, so he's declaring it a fumble on the field. This again, this is pressure coming off the outside. I think the hand was empty as it started to go forward, Mike, on that particular angle. Norman gets in there. It's That's a out. fumble. Woo. What a play. The what North play. Carolina State defense steps up again. And another turnover for Clemson. They have been plagued the last three games. Washington. Back to the line of scrimmage, knocked down Rennie Moore. Well, when you talk about turnovers, that has really plagued Clemson the last two games. Seven coming up into the last two games. Now today, and, and being the number seven team in the country, you can't do that. They understand that. It's not something you're trying to do. This is just a result of being a little off in your timing. You know, just a split second sooner, the ball's gone. Those eight turnovers in two-plus games match their season total before that. Second and goal. T.J. Graham flanked wide right. Glennon looks the other way. Throws for the end zone. Touchdown! Jay Smith! Clemson's defense is giving up about 26 points a game. They may have a tough time holding NC State under that number today with these turnovers. What a first half for the Wolfpack. Sadie for the point after. I'll tell you what, this NC State football team showed up. We said they had to start fast and had to start with energy and early. The defense leading the way again. The turnover and the offense. How about Mike Glennon? Mike Glenn had, Glennon has picked it up. It's amazing how play calling works when the quarterback does his job. All of a sudden, they look really good. Mike Glennon had struggled the last three ball games. Not today. His last two passes have gone for scores. And NC State is pumped. Jerron Brown, a minimal return. When you go back and you look at how fast this NC State team is playing, watch how hard the drive to here linebackers got to look outside to this receiver he's going to go to the inside and when that it's just a bang bang play linebackers not able to get back deep enough and Glennon gets rid of the football look at the decisive see how decisive Glennon was plants his foot throws the ball 
Carrico Hawkins, the linebacker, couldn't get back quick enough. Now the challenge to the Clemson offense. Ellington to the outside. Picks up a first down out near the 30. North Carolina State said they were going to try to confuse the Clemson defense by using motion and formation. So far, it's working. And Clemson's last three possessions, three and out, three and out, fumble on the first play. They've got to figure it out. Clemson's offense, four straight drives starting inside the 20-yard line, and a lot of that's because of the aggressive play of Clemson, of NC State's defense. Now they say Ellington stepped out of bounds a yard shy of the first down. Brian Slay swallows him up this time, and it's going to be third and very short for the Tigers. Clemson only 70 yards in total offense, normally explosive. They've got the first down here. Mark it at the 29-yard line. Mike, Remember, you know, they're playing without Sammy Watkins, and Sammy Watkins may be the most dangerous, explosive wide receiver in college football. So you take away a huge weapon, but they've got some other guys who can play this game. That's one of them. DeAndre Hopkins still on his feet, makes another cut. Hopkins making guys miss all over the field down to the 45. There is a flag down, and it's going to come back, wiping out a gain of 26 Holding yards. 63 of the offense. 10 yards the previous spot. First down. That's Brandon Thomas, who is playing left tackle today for the injured Philip Price, who's not back this week. They hope to get him back for the ACC championship game. So Thomas moves from left guard to left tackle, and David Smith, the backup left guard, moves into the starting lineup. That time it hurt them. It's just a different drop, and you can understand he's a little bit out of position. But Sammy Watkins isn't here. But Hopkins, uh, Watkins isn't here, but Hopkins is here. Dwayne Allen is here. This offense, this football team is more than just one player. Clemson now reach, needs to reach the 39 for a first down. Ball's on the ground. And the Wolf Pack has it again. Bellamy fumble on the reverse handoff. Turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. Manning with the recovery and another huge play and an unforced error for the Tigers. This is all about timing. It's a very dangerous call here. Mike Bellamy, he's going to be to the right side of the quarterback. And when he comes back on the counter, it's a real hard bang, bang handoff. It's really hard for a quarterback to hand this ball off, much less another player who's not used to doing that, used to hate trying to get it done. It's a tough execution, and there's NC State's defense. Because of them, all around the ball, they get it. Washington, room on the right side to the 10. Pushed out of bounds at the 6. And if you're pushing buttons for NC State right now, you're hitting all the right ones. This is the identical look that you and I saw when Clemson played at Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech's defense came out playing very aggressive. Exactly. Ignited their offense. They're limiting the number of possessions by Clemson by keeping the football and being efficient with it when they have it. First and goal. Washington, nothing. Anthony in the middle of that defense. Remember when I said coming in this in this open, yes, Clemson's, they've got a berth. They've got a ticket to play in the championship game for the ACC. But they can't look past this. The, I, you could sense that they're losing their momentum that they had started early in the season. A big comeback win last week against Wake Forest. And they've got to get that mojo back. Well, with what happened last night with Oklahoma State losing, Clemson is a one-loss team. There are a lot of things that could happen. It would take a miracle, perhaps, but they could end up in a national championship game, but they're not going to get there with two losses. Out in the flat, this is complete. Not a good throw. Washington had to go to the ground to make the catch. Considering how explosive Clemson is on offense, this is huge for North Carolina State. You don't want to settle for field goals. You need all the points you can get. Yeah, but they're going to have to come up with, a, with some kind of plan Clemson's offensive line if they're going to get back into this game because there's a lot of pressure. It's a heck of a catch. Third and goal. Can Glennon do it again? Tight end on the right side, George Bryan. Glennon half roll to the left, throws to the corner incomplete. 
Graham wanted a flag, not going to get it, and they will bring on the field goal team. Absolutely. Points after turnover so important in this in this football game, and and, and it, it's a win for Clemson's defense to force the field goal attempt. Momentum is such an elusive thing, but right now, Old Mo is really favoring North Carolina State on both sides of the ball. Everything starting to go their way. Sadie to kick from 21 yards out. Hammers it down the middle. Boy, oh boy. North Carolina State on top of Clemson 17 to 3. And it was set up by another turnover on an inside reverse. Ooh, but at that might remember that's just after the long pass play that was called back because of holding. That's what Dabo Sweeney was so upset about. I mean, it's just not working right now for the Clemson Tigers. Sammy Watkins has not played. Sprained shoulder. They said it would be highly unlikely he would play today. He would have to come to the coaching staff and say, I feel perfect. He apparently did not. And they don't want to risk further injury as well. Jerron Brown on the return. Flag comes in late. During the return, blocking the back, 26 of the receiving team. 10 yards to spot the foul. First down. That'll put Clemson in the hole again. One of the hallmarks of the Tigers' offense this year, Craig, is they have been able to come from behind. What do they have to do in this? I would say they need to get Andre Ellington going with the, with the ground game. They've got to establish some kind of attitude to help that offensive line get in sync in this football game. And then the other receivers out there, the plays are there to be made, but they've got to establish some kind of some consistency and I think it's the offensive line. I'm going to ask for Ellington to get the offensive line involved. Well Hopkins was the go to guy before Sammy Watkins came to campus. Ellington not much. We check in with Robert Flores. All right Mike Ohio State trying to come back from their deficit against Penn State. Braxton Miller to the tight end. Jake Stoneburner cuts the lead to three but Penn State mixing it up offensively using some wildcat there. Clemson, they get something going on offense, and that was thrown into triple coverage intended for Hopkins and Manning, number 35, who's having a big, big ball game on defense. May have gotten a hand on that one. Yeah, and Audie Coles right there in the middle of the field. NC State's able to put some pressure with just four. And that's a that's a bad sign for Clemson. When you talk about the game and the tempo and what they're doing here, this is not a good sign if NC State's allowed to drop seven. North Carolina State has had the ball nearly twice as much as Clemson has had it in this first half. Third and nine when we come back to Raleigh. Now let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. And it's a shocker. Clemson with only 72 total yards in offense in the first half. They've turned it over twice. That's hurt them. Taj Boyd only 33 yards passing. Glennon has hit 11 of 15 and thrown for two scores. And here's a big third down. Uh, and, and to add to that last five possessions, only 16 yards of offense, 20 yards in flags. Big rush on Boyd and down he goes inside the five. Manning and Norman got there again. Norman earlier caused the fumble that set up a touchdown. And again, this is NC State coming with just four. Very un-Mike Archerish. He usually brings five or six. And so when you're able to get this done with just four, you're just getting beat up front. Bottom line, they're not getting it done on the offensive line at Clemson. Holy cow. What a first half for the Wolfpack. Zimmerman to kick to Graham. Just a step away from the end line in the end zone. 
and they didn't get it off in time. And then he shanks the punt, but there will be no play. Play of the game against the kicking team. Half the distance to the goal, still fourth down. And the last thing you want to do as a punter is get the ball back right after you've shanked one. Zimmerman is the leading kicker in the ACC. Please reset the game clock to 5 minutes, 55 seconds. 5 minutes, 55 seconds. The NC State sideline and these fans are going crazy. And rightfully so. Good job by Zimmerman just to get it out of there. Graham. Got speed. Graham. Just out of bounds inside the 10. Are you kidding? A 34-yard return of a 42-yard punt. One of the better athletes in the ACC, T.J. Graham, an all-around player, has just turned into a wide receiver. If you give him an inch, he takes it. He's an explosive player. Watch how he runs by the punt coverage team. The dead leg there almost got by the punter. Again, this is an all-around great first half by NC State. Michael Peak, number 45, got a great block on the edge that gave him an extra 20 yards on that return. Crazy off the right side. And they are just outwilling Clemson right now. They're taking it to them. That's old school Dana Bible. Throwback to the Boston College days with Tom O'Brien. Two tight ends, single back back there. Get big, be aggressive. And that's not what Clemson needs to look at. It is Clemson defensive line. I know they've been out there a lot. But this right here, this is defend the seventh ranking in the BCS. It's time for them to step up. They've got to create a turnover. Time to suck it up, isn't it? Another big formation. Creasy off the right side. Touchdown. Holy cow. Come and send us a letter. <laughs> NC State needs this game to just have a shot at getting a bowl invitation. They are playing for their lives right now. Well, there's some who are saying that Tom O'Brien was playing for his job. I mean, there are a lot of people around here wondering, what's Tom O'Brien? Is he the guy for this football program? I think Tom O'Brien is an outstanding football coach. I've always said if he were a stock, I'd be buying his certificate. Tom O'Brien knows what he's doing. The difference in this football game today is that they're all the units are playing together. Most importantly, Mike Glennon has made some throws yeah. that he had to make that's put pressure on Clemson. And remember, this was going to be a really good year for NC State. They had so many injuries. Of course, when you talk about injuries, people sort of go tone deaf because everybody has players that are hurt. But so many injuries this year, and defensively, they're just starting to get some guys back. I think it's a, it's it's just right now Clemson, a, a football team that has been hit in the mouth, and you can't just say, well, Sammy Watkins, their All-American freshman and superstar, is not in the game. I said coming into this thing, there are a lot more players and a lot more assets to Dabo Sweeney's football team than one player, but they have not shown it today. Well, Clemson has made some big comebacks this year, but I tell you what, they're in a heck of a hole right now. Brown and Hopkins are deep to receive the kick of Sadie. Brown from the nine. Gets up to the 26-27 yard line. Michael Peak with another play on special teams. Now for today's Aflac trivia question. When was the last Clemson team to win 10 games in a season? And who was the head coach? That's a good one. Hmm. That's a good one. 
That's a good question. I know the year, but I can't remember the coach. Can Clemson do anything on offense? Four-man rush. Boyd over the middle, and this one is complete. Out to the 43-yard line, and it got it to his tight end, Dwayne Allen. Boy, the beauty of Dwayne Allen is he's not just a tight end. He was on a slot receiver that time. He got out wide where they couldn't mess with him with their hands at the line of scrimmage. He's an excellent slot receiver, as, as good as he can be when he puts his hand in the dirt. Our scouts at ESPN say if he comes out, he's going to be a first-round draft choice and the number one tight end taken. Bellamy is buried at the corner by Earl Wolf, the second leading tackler on this team. And those wide runs have not worked very well today for Clemson. No, and because of recognition, talking with the coaching staff at NC State, the defensive guys felt like they had a real good feel for identifying formations and tendencies from that. Blitz coming. They don't get there. The pass underneath, not for much. Again to the tight end, and again by Bishop on the tackle. It'll bring up a third and long. NC State has had the answer so far. Yes, they have. Now, it'll be interesting to see again. Mike Archer, the last two times that he's had third and long, he's only rushed four and gotten away with it. Dropped seven into coverage. But but remember what Wake Forest did a week ago. They dropped eight, and it really bothered Boyd. Four-man rush here, the pass underneath. Missed tackling, an opportunity, but the NC State defense swarms again to stop Brandon Ford. You can't run a one-yard crossing route on third and eight and, and, and have success with it. When you're dropping the covers, defending the first down marker, NC State's going to hug up on you. They'll give you that all day. Clock running, 3.07 to go in the first half, and North Carolina State's going to get the football back. Clemson sends in the punt team. Zimmerman to kick to Graham, who waits at his 10. And this one skips into the end zone. That's a break for NC State there. They'll start from the 20. Robert Flores, what do you have? Well, we've got the University of Houston, 10-0 for the first time in school history. Have yet to score a touchdown until this touchdown run from Michael Hayes. He's headed to Bad Street, Atlanta, GA. 13-0 late first half at Robertson Stadium in Houston. All right, thank you, Robert. We have 2.42 to go here. If you're NC State, Craig, what do you do offensively right now? You, you two tight ends, shell? two tight ends, single back, run the football until they can stop it. Okay. And, and Tom O'Brien's a smart man. 24-3, do nothing that allows them to turn the football over. Yeah, you don't want to give them anything easy, right? Broken tackle. And crazy running hard for good yardage. Now for the answer to our Aflac trivia question, which was the last Clemson team to win 10 games in the season. Who was the head coach? Ken Hatfield's first season at Clemson in 1990. Hmm. They didn't like him at Arkansas because he was going nine and two, so they got rid of him. He came <laughs> one ten at Clemson. What's that old saying? You, you get rid of a coach who's used to losing in bowl games all the time. <laughs> Next one doesn't get you in any bowl games. <laughs> Crazy across the 35 to the 36 out of bounds. Another first down. Quandon Christian makes the tackle. Everybody running hard for NC State this afternoon. NC State's offensive line led by R.J. Mattis, the number 79, the left tackle. He's just caving down the inside. And, and Clemson's receiving, 100% receiving NC State's blockers. Lennon gives off another running play, this time to Washington. He'll pick up a couple. Brandon Thompson, who was banged up a little bit earlier in the ballgame, comes off. 75 yards rushing, first half for NC State. They only average 102 yards a game, which is 111th in the country. Clock running. Lennon out in the flat to Washington. 
Can't slip the tackle taken down at the 41 yard line. These are nice safe plays if they happen to break one for 20 or 30 yards then they'll try something else. Yeah you know and and, and what they're not wanting to do is to turn it over here obviously. Absolutely. And, and just maintain the way the defense is playing for NC State punt the football let those guys go back on the field. This be third down here Clemson with all of its timeouts. Yeah, I've been calling timeout, but I think that just tells you right now, Dabble Sweeney's mindset. Look, let's let's not let's avoid a disaster here. Creasy on the draw. He's got a first down out at the 49. That'll stop the clock. And now NC State, pretty good field position to take a chance to get some yardage and maybe set up a field goal. Yeah, I think what they're trying to do here, it, at, at a minimum here, they will be conservative until the last play of the of the half. And then throw the ball deep and see if you can get a Hail Mary. Four man rush, good protection. Down the sideline and almost caught. Broken up by Breland. It was intended for Brian Underwood. Looked like he had a shot at it, but Breland got a hand in there. Yeah, I like that there. That's a nice job of Underwood going down the field. This ball was well thrown. Mike Glennon's feeling it. You can feel it when you got a big lead like he has right now. Trying to fight to get back to the inside. Underwood almost came up with this ball. Boy, is that good coverage? Well, had his really nice job there. Breland. Glennon over the middle. Caught down at the 15 yard line. Tobias Palmer. And somehow that ball got in there for 36 yards. The clock will stop while they move the chains. They have a timeout left. They can also clock it. Yeah, I think, Mike, you clock it right here. Then you can take one shot into the end zone and have that timeout in your pocket. Holy cow. Uh, and, you know, and again, this here, this is all about having confidence that if you make a mistake, your defense is playing so well, you can go back on the field. There's no pressure. Mike Glennon, this is like, this is this is better than seven-on-seven seven in practice. And, and the secondary of Clemson just kind of shell-shocked. Right now, have no idea what's coming at them. They're not playing aggressive. They're not playing like the number seven team in the country. This football team's just been knocked on their back by NC State in this first half. That got between Brewer and Meeks. And Glennon, who got off to a slow start, has hit eight of his last ten. Two of them for touchdowns. He's got another shot here. Kick it. Kick it. Kick it. And now they're saying, hey, Nine seconds. Here comes the field goal team. We're not going to take a chance. And I don't mind this decision. You throw in the end zone, you might have it picked. This will be a 32-yard try. They've already hit on a 21-yard. And this one is good. That'll stop the clock with five seconds to go. And Craig, what that does gives you even more momentum going into the locker room. It, it is amazing how how fluid the team looks when all three phases just are coming together. You know, key plays throughout this football ball game has been important. Now, you saw the sack early on, and it was a fumble recovery by NC State. Led to this touchdown throw. Mike Glennon in the pocket threw decisively. Then they tried to get a little trickeration going there. The misdirection and the fumble and the field goal that ensued from that. T.J. Graham got in the act with his punt return. Again, all three phases of this football game have been explosive. That set up a touchdown. The run to the outside, Clemson's defense hanging around on the middle of the field. No pursuit to it. And Craig, Mike North Clinton. Carolina State's offense has only scored 24.3 points a game all year long. They've already scored more than that in the first half. Clemson's offense hasn't crossed midfield in this football game. We showed you the Batman Robin kind of theme deal to the open of this football game of all the explosiveness, the scoring, the yards a game, passing the game, Taj Boyd, all that. They have not even crossed midfield. Well, if they're Batman and Robin, NC State is being played by the Joker this afternoon. Yeah, their only score was when they started past the 50-yard line. So, I mean, it's just been, it's been domination. Squib kick here with only five seconds left. Clock is down to one, now zero. And NC State says, let's go to the locker room. Glennon, heck of a first half. Hats off to the entire NC State team. The defense was superb against one of the best offenses in the entire country. I, I think this here, this is up to Dabo Sweeney to go in there, and his football team has to look in the mirror. 
and they got to say, you know what, fellas, we've got players capable of coming back. We've come back before. We've trailed by 14, 18, 14. We've come back and we've won and won decisively. But they're going to have to find a way to somehow slow down NC State's defense. Well, they're down now by 24. That would be the biggest comeback they could make this year. At the half, our score, NC State 27 to 3. Now let's head to the studio for the halftime report. on ESPN. If you are just joining us, it has been a stunning afternoon so far. 27 to 3. North Carolina State over the number seven team in the country. Now Clemson has had three huge comebacks for victories this year. But Craig, they've never been in a hole this deep. Can they do it? You know, when I think about what Clemson's done in this first half, it's not about X's and O's. It's not about strategy. It's about energy. It's about intensity. NC State stood up in this football game and hit them in the mouth. Clemson has not responded. So before you can talk strategy and X and O, you got to get your football team energized and into it. Well, and he thought that maybe Sammy Watkins would come rushing to the rescue. The freshman wide receiver, the brilliant one, are dashed because he is in street clothes. Clemson will get the return in the second half, and it's Brown out across the 40. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. And these numbers look like the opening series and not the opening half for Clemson. Taj Boyd only 57 yards. Ellington just 31. Bellamy rushed for only seven and put a critical fumble on the ground. Yeah, and the NC State defensive line led the charge. And I know the secondary, the back seven played well. It's that D line that dominated. Boyd throws on the roll, will get the ball into NC State territory, and that's Adam Humphreys, who's starting in place of Sammy Watkins. His Indic second catch. There's an indication of what I'm talking about. You see him moving the pocket, getting Boyd outside. He's not been able to stand still in the pocket with any time without pressure. That's what coaches have to do, adjust at the half. You want a screen here. Guess who? Manning. He has been in on so many plays today. Well, he came into this game with 55 tackles, and the coaches told us playing really well. I talked to John Tenuta this morning, and John said, Craig, man, Manning is playing really well, getting underneath the block and going right to the ball carrier. Boyd, pressure coming in his face, throws. What a catch at the 40-yard line. Hopkins with his hands right above the grass. That's a fantastic pick up the quarterback throw. But again, it's pressure up the middle. And 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 Taj Boyd just is not able to, to set and throw and use that arm that he has. It was an even tougher catch on the replay because he had to turn around. Ellington hit in the backfield. Manning again. Well, you can tell this kid studied film this week. He knows where this ball is going. He knew his responsibility. He went straight to the ball carrier and, and, and knocks him out. Now, this, is again, is a defense that has played on their toes the entire game. Clemson is only two out of nine on third down, and Ellington, who is such a key part of the ground game, we saw what happened when he was injured in the Georgia Tech game and could not play. The youngsters came in and committed huge turnovers. So Ellington really has to be able to come back in this ball game for Clemson to feel confident about their chances of coming back. This offensive line, they lost Philip Price, their left tackle, and, and you pointed out earlier that Brandon Thomas was their guard. He had to move out, which put Mason Cloy in at left guard, 
and the, they've been out of sync. And with Thomas going down, that really would put pressure on this already offensive line being beat up. Good sign here is Thomas able to sit up the 300 pound sophomore guard and tackle. But when you're missing the top two guys on the left side of your offensive line, that is the quarterback's blindside protection. Mm. Mm. And he is walking very gingerly. Yeah, this is now it's mix and match for that offensive line. This is a real tough challenge. Brad Scott, the offensive line coach, though, he is fantastic. He's been around a long time. He'll have to mentally get his guys up front ready before they can get physical. They'll have to know who they're blocking. And tonight, that NC State defensive line has been ferocious. You saw Mason Cloy in there. And it looks like Dabo Sweeney is going to roll the dice here on fourth down at about four. No sign to the punt team. And he's out to console Brandon Thomas. Uh, I, and I think this, I think this is a, a tough roll of the dice. It's a lot of risk involved with going for it right now. Opening series of the second half. You got to punt the ball down the field. Let your defense come out and get in the game. Especially when you just lost your left tackle. Fourth and four. They need to reach just shy of the 39-yard line for a first down. Boyd. Pressured. Trying to run for it, knocked out of bounds, short of the stick. NC State holds again, and Clemson will turn it over on downs. And Audie Cole and Manning ran him out of bounds. What a job by the Wolfpack. Yeah, you know what? This defense understands formations. They know exactly where the play is going to. That's why I said it was a high risk. Watch the secondary level and the coverage. There are no options. The tight end has to stay in, giving maximum protection there. He's blocking, keeping Adi Cole out of the equation. No receivers down the field open for anywhere to, for Taj Boyd to throw the football. I would not have done that. Now NC State takes over at its own 41-yard line. Glennon wants to throw. It's a screen. Washington, midfield, Moore, near the Clemson 40-yard line. We told you in the first half, people, even if they're really good with the screen game, don't like to do it about against Clemson because they are so good at defending it. But that's the second big traditional screen pass they've been able to run. You like that. I love screens too, Mike. And, you know, that one there was a result of Mike Lennon being patient, looked right. Had a double screen look going there. Opened up the left side. And good job of that offensive line getting downfield blocking. Glennon wants to throw again. Runs away from pressure. Throws on the run and does the smart thing and throws it out of bounds. This offense, they really have picked it up. And, and the comparison of what happened in the first quarter to the second quarter, the entire Wolfpack football team woke up in the second quarter. Special teams defense offense got some throws going Glennon went five for five at one point there two passes in a row for touchdowns it's three nothing at the end of the first quarter and then just exploded second and ten Washington only a couple Andre Branch defensively against the run did a good job there and st stuffed the play. Yeah, Andre Branch has got to help his team. They've got to pick up the decision by Dabo Sweeney to go for it there on that fourth down. He's really got to motivate these guys. Kevin Steele's defense is good, but they have not been playing aggressive in this game. Got to hand it to Glenn, and he's thrown the ball very well. His line has given him time after the first couple of series. Four-man rush here. Glenn hands in the pocket. Throws back shoulder. Complete to T.J. Graham. What a throw. Uh, I, t I tell you what you need to take note of. This season, T.J. Graham came into it wanting to become a wide receiver. Remember, we talked to the coaches, talked to Graham. He wants to become a good receiver. This back shoulder throw in the hands 
the hands of T.J. Graham. That's a big time play by a wide receiver. Rashard Hall got there late, and one of the Wolfpack, Wolfpack players is still down. I think it was Glennon's best throw tonight. It really had some steam on it. It was obvious it was going to be a back shoulder throw, and he put it right on the money. I, I, you know what? When you talk about this game to the point where we've been watching, it's been about NC State's offense. They play. This defense has been playing the offense. It's amazing what happens when Mike Glennon connects with some of these it throws. It sure is. Just three points are separating Carl Edwards and Tony Stewart heading into the final race for the championship. NASCAR has to be thrilled. Now they go head-to-head -head for the ultimate prize. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup concludes with the Ford 400 at Homestead, Miami. Coverage begins on ESPN tomorrow afternoon at 2 Eastern. Yeah, Basically, it's a match race with traffic. Yeah, no doubt. And, and in qualifying just completed, Edwards is on the pole. Stewart will start 15th. NC State from the 14-yard line. Glennon again. Got it to Graham. T.J. Graham to the one. Hall made a saving tackle. The fourth catch for Graham. Okay, now this is the second time we've seen the outside receiver on the left side come to the middle of the field. Graham is lined up. This is Dana Bible. Watch how he comes to the middle of the field, and it clears him so he can catch the ball. See the middle? Coming to the middle. Inside slot receiver comes back to the outside. The yards after the catch, that's that punt return ability that you're seeing there. First and goal, Washington may have lost three. Carrico Hawkins led the charge. Well, Hawkins came across. We hadn't seen a Clemson Tiger come across like that many times this afternoon. Well, they better get fired up. Again, this, this drive right here follows the opening possession of Clemson and having the fourth down conversion that failed near midfield. Second and goal, the ball spotted near the five. Washington will go in motion empty backfield. Glennon over the middle, batted down. Good job by Hawkins. Stood his ground in the middle and got the right hand out. Yeah, you know, but the one thing about it here is that Glennon, he's just, he's zipping the football. He's looking around. No one has been hitting him today in that pocket. A few times they've made him leave the pocket. But, man, when he sits back there, he's got a, he's got a strong arm now. He does. Well, Tom O'Brien said at the start of the year, and he's had some terrific quarterbacks over the course of his career, said Glennon can be as good as anybody I've ever had. He just needs the experience. Third and goal. Glennon for the end zone, incomplete. Martin Jenkins on the coverage for the Clemson Tigers. Uh, and you know what? Jenkins just picked his football team up with that play right there because that ball was zipped and it was going to be on the money. And you'll see Jenkins run go through the ball. Watch how he goes back and accelerates. Plants the foot, get up back in there with a the hand right through to rip it out. Jay Smith, the intended receiver. Now they'll go for the field goal. Sadie has already hit from 21 and 32. This will be another relatively easy 21-yard attempt. And he is three for three. And North Carolina State, after taking over on downs when Clemson gambled on fourth, makes them pay. They are up 30. To three. ABC Tuesday. Give thanks for comedy and for last man standing. It's all new and nominated for the People's Choice Award for the best new comedy. Tim Allen is last man standing on new Tuesday, 8 7 Central on ABC. 30 to 3. North Carolina State over the Clemson Tigers. Peak rather across the 30 yard line. No, it was Brown. Look at these numbers. 
They are staggering for the Clemson Tigers who lead the ACC in scoring and total offense. Not today. Three points as opposed to 37 plus. Only 28 yards rushing, 78 yards passing. Who would have believed at this point in the ballgame they would have 106 yards against the North Carolina State defense that has been injury riddled all year long? Boy, pressure from behind, and they got him again. Art Norman, the red shirt freshman, 6'1", 242 pounds, gets the third sack of the day for the Wolfpack. And watch again, four rushers, and they are just beating up front. And the coverage downfield, I was watching, they bracketed the inside receivers. They were solid on the outside. This defensive game plan by Mike Archer and John Tenuta, they know and are expecting what's coming at them. Those two guys have performed at a high level for a long, long time. The pass with a man in his face. Hopkins, what a catch. Boy, Taj Boyd got ripped as he threw it, but picks up 43 yards. And C.J. Wilson, the defender, was beaten. This is guts by Taj Boyd to get the ball off, knowing he's going to get drilled right in the chops. And it's a fantastic job. DeAndre Hopkins, over 100 career catches, coming through, making a huge play. Wilson never saw it. Now Boyd on the scramble. Just shy of the 15-yard line is where they'll mark him. But Hopkins, that, that energy right now had to have blown air into this offense, into this football team. They need something to get their paws up. they got to get it going. Needed a big play, and they got it. Blitz coming. Boyd throws underneath. And that is a minimal gain if it's caught, and it was not by Dwayne Allen. So you've got this four-man rush that's coming, and they're being effective with that. Sometimes the quarterback has to take off. See, he has to become the extra guy that lifts the offense up. That's an amazing statistic. They have had virtually no success against this defense. Boy throws for the end zone too high and great coverage by Emerson on DeAndre Hopkins. Emerson, by the way, this is his kind of ball game with a big lead where the other team has to start throwing because he leads the nation in interceptions and is tied for NC State school record with 10. 10 picks this year for a guy who had none a year ago. They moved him to the wide side of the field. He has been spectacular. How do you go from zero to 10? Very quickly, apparently. <laughs> Four-man rush. Boyd with time for the end zone. Nobody home intended for Hopkins. Well, you know what? That, when you talk about Emerson and him wanting to go against Sammy Watkins, we look at the offensive numbers. Sammy Watkins had 19, has 1,900 all-purpose yards. It's not just his receiving ability. It's the, it's the return game. It's everything that he does offensively for this football team that they're missing. Now they're going to try a 32-yard field goal, or presumably try. Catanzaro's hit from 24, the only score in this game. And he snuck that one just inside the upright. So it's 30 to 6, but still a huge 24 point lead for the Clemson Tigers playing without Sammy Watkins. ESPN's College Football on ABC, brought to you by Nissan, proud partner of the Heisman Trophy, and Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. Some of the famous alums, that's actor Zach Galifianakis. Remember in The Hangover, his character called his group of friends the Wolf Pack. How ironic today. You also saw Bill Cower in his playing days at NC State. Of course, he went on to his brilliant coaching career and now broadcast. I believe, believe Cower had that look that he could have joined that Wolf Pack gang oh, in yeah. Vegas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he could join any gang he wants to, I'll tell you. One of my favorite people. T.J. Graham is deep to receive. Clemson has been held to two field goals. Nice kick. Graham from the goal line. 
Clemson speed runs him down at the 15. Quandon Christian, nice job on special teams. Mike Glennon, we've seen now several times in this game where the middle of the field has been kind to him, and the, the graphic that we're showing you here supports that. A lot of production in the middle of the field and to the right. I'd stay with that. George Bryan has three catches, the tight end does, and it's really opened up some plays for them outside. Craig, you can already see it if you're an NC State fan. You're already looking at the clock. There's eight minutes and 38 seconds to go in the third quarter. Maybe a little early because Clemson got a lot of fire in the belly right now. Deshaun Williams made the tackle, big number 99. They're going to have to get to Mike Glennon if they're going to have any chance of coming back. They cannot afford to let Glennon sit back there and throw the football. And for Clemson, you know, just a little life, you know, having some energy about them. NC State needs to win this game and then win its last home game next week against Maryland to become bowl eligible. Something Tom O'Brien did consistently at Boston College before coming here. And Clemson right now has got to be playing for some pride. Glennon with all day in the middle. Quinton Payton. A gain of 17 yards. Peyton had the third or fourth option for Glennon. I mean, that that's how long Glennon had to sit back in that pocket to throw the football. And, and the patience and the accuracy there. That Those are the reasons, that kind of play there, that Tom O'Brien's so excited about what Mike Glennon has in his abilities. On a straight drop back, it's amazing that Clemson didn't get any more pressure. Washington. Picks up about four. Williams made the tackle again. Now, Mike Glennon had to replace a legend here in Russell Wilson. And, and it even compounded the fact that Russell Wilson's had such a great season at Wisconsin this yes. year. But there, it's, a, it's a completely different player that Glennon is. He doesn't have that running skills and, and the, the threat of that that Wilson did. But he does have a big, big arm. Somebody they knew could make all the throws. Second and six looked like a little confusion in the secondary for Clemson. Washington again back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Robert Flores with an update from the studio. Robert. All right, Mike, AT&T All-America Player of the Week update. Here is a worthy nominee, Iowa State redshirt freshman quarterback Jared Barnett. 376 yards, three touchdowns, did throw a couple of picks, but Iowa State able to shock number two Oklahoma State in overtime. Text vote to 55862 for a chance at a trip to the national title. Was a remarkable performance, not only by that young man, but the entire Iowa State team, the coaches had them beautifully prepared. Here's another screen. This has worked all day. Washington, 50, 45, 43 yard line. Nice job by Camden Wentz, the center. Got out in front and helped him pick up 22 yards. Great call by Dana Bible. Watch how slow the Clemson defenders are to get to the outside. The line from NC State was already out there. Big Doran Kristoff, he's over out top. I mean, that was a well-designed play and excellent execution. Another set of downs. Flanker screen, the pass to Bias Palmer. Stays in bounds, stays on his feet. 10, 5, touchdown. Simply would not be denied. They couldn't knock him out of bounds. They couldn't knock him down. Now Glennon has every right to smile. What a performance. The third touchdown pass of the night. For Glennon, 253 yards. He's hit 19 out of 27. The reason that play worked was because of the tempo. Did you see him get right back to the line of scrimmage after the previous screen? Went right back. Clemson wasn't lined up. The result, the touchdown. North 
Carolina State has scored on its last seven drives. Seven. And they're up 37 to six. This is the number 17, or the number seven team in the country. And they're eating their lunch right now. Jerome Brown across the 25. Tonight on the ESPN Networks, you can catch four top 10 BCS teams. Starting off, ESPN at 7 Eastern. Number one, LSU against Ole Miss at 8. ABC and ESPN 3. Have either number 5, Oklahoma, at number 22, Baylor, or USC at number 4, Oregon in the Pac-12. Check your local listings. Then back at 10.15 on ESPN. More from the Pac-12. Number 9, Stanford against Cal in the 114th edition of the big game. Taj Boyd in the unenviable spot of trying to engineer an enormous comeback at this point. Another another night where I can't go to sleep. The game starts Stanford at 10-15. <laughs> Last night, the Oklahoma State game was so exciting. Iowa State, what they did in beating them, my heart rate was going so much I couldn't go to sleep for the next I day. I know you were exhausted and needed some sleep, but you weren't going to get it. You had to watch that game. Four-man rush. Boyd throws underneath to Humphreys. And Humphreys breaks the tackle down to the Clemson or the uh, NC State 46 yard line, gain of 18. And they're in their hurry up, at least they're used to doing this. Yes, they the are. Tempo. They are. Early in the season, they were one of the highest per play, per game teams in the country. Boyd, plenty of time. Now he's pressured. Throws on the run complete down to the 30 yard line. That'll be another first down. Jerron Brown. Mike Archer, he'll take a little bit of, of this, this slow death defense that he's playing right now. Only so long. Next thing you know, he'll bring five guys in there. He'll try to dis disrupt Taj Boyd. Very smart coach. Boyd flushed. Throws sidearm complete for another first down down to the 17 18 yard line. Humphreys. What an athletic throw that was. I mean, I, it, Taj Boyd, remember now, Taj Boyd at, at one point in the season, not few, too few weeks ago, he was in the top eight of the Heisman vote getters, as was Sammy Watkins. Blitz coming this time. They want the screen to Ellington, but it's incomplete. Had it set up pretty well, but the pass was off target. And Boyd still looking for that touchdown pass, which would give him the school record at 28. And, and again, this is one of those places where Chad Morris, the offensive coordinator at Clemson, has to almost self-scout himself as they're playing the game. Because sure. the tendencies and the plays that they've been doing, NC State understands. They're all over them. To the end zone, an incomplete Amerson right on top of Humphreys. That kid can play corner. You know, when you when you have 10 picks in one season, it just you, you always are around the football. And, and that ball was thrown extremely well. But Amerson was there to disrupt it. Boyd forced out of the pocket. They got him. Daryl Cato Bishop gets the sack. That's four for him. Sweezy was the first man there and flushed him out of the pocket. Watch the loop stunt that comes from the defensive end coming around to the middle of the field. You see him on the right side, starts right, comes right up the middle. The Clemson offensive line trying to play the piano, passing them off, weren't able to do it. And the combination, again, of a four-man rush getting to Taj Boyd. It's fourth and long, but Dabo Sweeney making the right call here. You've got to try to go for the touchdown because you're down by 31 points. Got to keep the drive alive. Picked off by Emerson. He just tied the ACC record of 11 in a season.
You start throwing it up for grabs, and Amerson is in the same zip code. He's going to get a lot of them. <laughs> David Amerson, he reads the quarterback first and foremost. He knows where the quarterback's looking. He starts peeling that direction, sees the route. They're trying to run a wheel route down the field. Amerson saying, please give me a chance. One more. You just tried me. Try me once more. We all remember the great corner the of North Carolina. Play Dre it's Bly. under further review. They're going to review this. Dre Bly held the ACC record of 11. Amerson has just tied him. See if it's a touchback or not. Another. We're going to check to see where he was down. Looks like the ball's right on top of the goal line. Yeah. yeah. And if so, it's in the end zone. Yeah. Yeah. Audie Cole, number 42, that linebacker, I think is the is the ring leader of this defense. Big guy loves to hunt and fish. Every time we meet with him, I, I enjoy talking about his bow hunting or his his tactics and showing photos of what he's got and what I have. He's a big player, a quiet guy. Emerson, one of those. Very angular guys, over six feet, long arms. He can run. He may have been the only person in this stadium who was disappointed that Sammy Watkins couldn't play because he wanted to play against him. And his coaches told him, "You want to play again? You want to play in the league on Sundays in a couple of years? You got to play against guys like this." And he was looking forward to it. Yep. You know, and this is the frustrating part for Tom O'Brien and, and NC State fans is that this football team has been up and down and to lose to Boston College a team that's not playing well and not a good football team right that really bummed them out and and so I think and you're, rightfully so absolutely and I think you're seeing the result now of of a football team with character and a coaching staff that got them ready to play and and most importantly is when the offense and the quarterback, when they make plays, all of a sudden Dana Bible's a pretty darn good coach. Yeah, it makes makes a huge difference. Of course, that loss to Boston College was was especially troubling because it came after beating North Carolina for the fifth straight time, their arch rival, and that's huge around here. And then to go up and lay an egg was terribly disappointing. Well, they'd have taken after just further laying review, an egg. The, play, the ruling on the field stands as called. It's first down on the one yard line. Well, that has to fall under the category of uh, non-indisputable evidence. But look at Emerson. He has 11 picks, more than all of these teams, teams that are That's in the unreal. top 25. That's unreal. We, we saw that in the production meeting last night. We were all like, what? Are you kidding me? Isn't that something? That is that. Man. And we still got uh, three minutes and 12 seconds of the third quarter and the fourth quarter to go here. He may, they're going to be chucking it up a lot. He may get another crack at it. Now, can NC State get out of the uh, shadow of their own goal line? Creasy for a couple with some breathing room. And now if you're NC State, you can start thinking, you know, all we need to do is a little bit of this and a little bit of that and make a clock run. There's a song you were leading me to there, but I digress. <laughs> um, on Thursday night, I was at Virginia Tech. And, and watch them. Virginia Tech and Logan Thomas goes back a few weeks ago. We saw the launch. Yes. We announced that Miami Virginia Tech game. And Logan Thomas since has taken that team and the Hokies are on a roll. Clemson better get it together before they go play in that ACC championship. Absolutely. Game. That's Creasy out to about the eight. Robert Flores with an update. All right, Mike, Craig, avert your eyes. University of Houston opening things up on SMU. Case Keenum, little flip to Justin Johnson. Cougars undefeated, ranked number 11 in the BCS, leading SMU 23-0, fourth quarter. Well, I think, May okay, now Thursday afternoons, Mark May and I, we go on SportsCenter and we do these four downs thing, and Mark May said that the over and under was five touchdown passes in the first half by Case Keenum. <laughs> so, Mayday. Yeah, you're wrong again. <laughs> Not even here to defend himself. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> He's probably sitting in Bristol though screaming right now. 
<laughs> Creasy trying to go to the outside. Brewer makes the tackle. Hey, I want to clarify now. Virginia Tech has not clinched. They, they, you know, Virginia is definitely in the in the equation here. But Clemson, just man, you're talking about getting your, you know. They're going in opposite directions. Virginia Tech appears to be getting stronger, and Clemson has struggled now for three weeks in a row, and they're going to lose two out of three unless they can have a miracle comeback here. I'm going to try to kick it out of the end zone. Hopkins waiting at the 42. He'll signal fair catch and make it inside the 45-yard line. Punt of 39. Let's take a look at today's good hands play brought to you by Allstate. Well, why don't we go with the good hands of David Emerson? All right. And I like a good. It's just, you know, this guy, when it's around, when it's around him and the area code that you mentioned, he's going to go get it. That graphic that we just showed you of him having more interceptions than many teams in the country. It helps when your front four are putting pressure on the quarterback and forcing him to throw it up into coverage. The NCAA record for a single season is 14. And another sack. And again, the first guy in there was J.R. Sweezy. He put the pressure on, and Daryl Cato Bishop for the second time, the beneficiary. He has two sacks. The team has four. And this team has been very good at going after the quarterback this year. That is 31 sacks on the season and 21 interceptions. That leads the country. Emerson had a shot at this one. So did the safety Bishop. So did the Clemson receiver. And it's DeAndre Hopkins who wins the fight for it. Two against one. And it just looked like he snatched it from Bishop. Tie goes to the runner. Or in this case, the catcher. <laughs> he did run to get down to make the catch. And, and you know what? DeAndre Hopkins twice now in this football game has gone up and fought for the football and come down with it. Picking up Taj, Taj Boyd. I, you know, I, I, I think the possession is with the defender on this one, though. I, I, I think Brandon Bishop. Mike Archer, the defensive coordinator, said Clemson's receivers are so good at taking the ball out of the air. Oh, man. Ooh. And boy, are they. And they can't challenge that. I mean, that's just, that's the call on the field. Another Clemson offensive lineman, Landon Walker, walking off the field, having to be helped off. They I mean, can't afford this. No, well, they, I mean, their offensive line, uh, they, they're, David Smith, he's now out playing left tackle for Brandon Thomas. Boyd, under pressure, throws incomplete. The pressure from Daryl Cato Bishop. He was in Taj Boyd's face before he could crank it up. Yeah, this is just an aggressive play here that the defense knows the play, knows their responsibility. They're playing a little bit faster tonight on defense than Clemson is offensively. Clemson averages over 37 points a game. They've been held to two field goals. To the end zone, it's intercepted. Picked off by Bishop. Brandon Bishop, who couldn't get the last one, but he got this one. Brandon Bishop did a nice job of understanding the route and jumped right underneath it, became the receiver. And, and, you know, this again, this goes into good coaching. It goes into good players having a football IQ, understanding the play. Watch Bishop as he jumps inside, becomes the main receiver. He beats the receiver to it. He beats a guy who's going to be playing in the NFL for a long time, Dwayne Allen. You see how he jumped inside that? He saw what Dwayne Allen was trying to do. A little bit of a toast route there on Audie Cole in the middle. Goes back to the middle, but Brandon Bishop saw what was happening in front of him, and he jumped and became the guy. Guys that study film can anticipate they can play faster on the field if they know, know what's coming. And these kids have sure known what was coming today. End of the third quarter. North Carolina State smoking Clemson 37 to 6. Only 
three points separate Carl Edwards and Tony Stewart heading into the final race for the championship. Now they go head to head for NASCAR's ultimate prize. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup concludes with a Ford 400 at Homestead, Miami tomorrow. Coverage starts at 2 o'clock on ESPN. This is just unbelievably stunning that the number 17 in the country would come in here against a struggling North Carolina State team that's got to win its last two just to be bowl eligible. Personal foul, face mask, 41 of the defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. And open up a 37 to 6 lead. College football is special because you never know who the next guy is in a game, who's going to be the star. Yeah. And it's about emotions. And from the beginning of this game, NC State's players had emotion. And the penalty will add 15 yards to the last play. NC State goes from the 41, Creasy. This kid's been impressive today, hasn't he? Yeah, I, I do. I like it. I like the way Creasy's playing. I like the balance of their team. How about Dana Bible? I mean, it, this this guy is an offensive coordinator, been around a long time, and for those following NC State, they've wondered, where's the offense? We've got the defense. Let's, so there was a little bit of pressure. He's such a nice man that nobody wants yeah. to speak up and say, hey, Dana Bible needs to pick it up. One of the nicest human beings you'll ever meet, Dana Bible, right there. And it all goes down to execution you know the coach calls a play and all of a sudden the quarterbacks making throws and they're catching and they're running and special teams and boy everybody's brilliant yeah, the plays you call look a whole lot better when people execute the plays and they have they have done that today you see a little slow to get up I, I, I've said this before uh, on Thursday nights we work I work with Colleen O'Brien Tom's daughter and she has got the same card playing composure as her dad. <laughs> <laughs> you, you'd be talking to her and she's got she got that poker face going. You're like, okay, now what's she thinking? Here? <laughs> Jesse Palmer, he's always teasing her. Like, All right, Colleen, be quiet. You're being too loud. <laughs> it, it, it's funny to see people be critical of Tom O'Brien because he doesn't show in their thinking enough emotion on the sideline. Jeez. This is thrown underneath, complete to George Bryan. Tom O'Brien, this is his fifth year at North Carolina State after a really good career at Boston College. And this was going to be his first full group of guys that he recruited, his first five-year senior class. But they suffered so many injuries to start the season they took their fullback a 250 pound fullback and had him playing defensive line because they didn't have anybody else to play on that side of the ball 38 yard kick no return 1255 to go the back seven of NC State has been playing very well they've been waiting on their defensive line to step it up and to finally have a great outing well, they arrive in this football game. The front four, that defensive line at NC State has been all over Taj Boyd. They've been in the backfield. They've created sacks. They've created fumbles. They've had turnovers. And I think that defensive line and their effort in this ball game has been the difference between NC State and Clemson. Another guy that's had a great night, Terrell Manning, the linebacker. He's been on so many big plays. Boyd under pressure, throws complete. Hopkins wrestled back after he had the first down by Emerson. Five catches for Hopkins, trying to carry the load with Sammy Watkins out. Yeah, you know, in Clemson, coming into this game, we said they needed to get back their mo, their swagger. I wanted to see the explosive plays. They've got a lot of explosive players. It's hard to have explosive plays when the quarterback has red helmets in his face. This one's complete to Joe Craig. You know, a lot of times you can tell how a game is going by just taking a look at the quarterback's jersey. And you look at Taj Boyd's jersey, there's not a clean spot on that baby. <laughs> He's not cheating the equipment manager of using the detergent tomorrow. No, sir. 
steps up and throws incomplete double coverage out there on Hopkins that time. Well, they are in absolute danger zone now that they're down like this, having to throw the football. When you have Amerson back there, Bishop just came up with a nice pick. Emerson's got to be thinking to himself, what's that record again? Has one tonight to give him 11 for the season. That ties the best single season mark in the history of the Atlantic Coast Conference. And only three behind the best that's ever happened in a single NCAA season. Blitz coming. They go out to Craig, and Craig can't avoid the pursuit. Dwayne Maddox, number 41, with a good job to make a stop. Man, that, I mean, you know what? That Again, they have the right play call. They, uh, because NC State had bliss. Everybody was in the middle of the yep. field at the quarterback. And one guy, Dwayne Maddox, saves them. Third and long. Bad pass. Out in the flat, D.J. Howard had to catch it behind him, and as he spun, he went down. That'll bring up a fourth and long. Five sacks, four turnovers. This NC State defense, I think I, Scott Matthews, our producer in our ear just a moment ago, said 37 to 6. Who would have thought it would be NC State Absolutely. in the fourth quarter? It's a great point. Graham is deep. He waits back at his 25. Zimmerman to punt. And Graham gets about three on the return shy of the 25 yard line. 11 01 left in this game. It is all NC State. College football on ABC. Brought to you by K Jewelers, the number one jewelry store in America. Every kiss begins with K. And Chevrolet, and their award winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. Some of the displays at the North Carolina State football facility, and when we visited with Tom O'Brien the other day, first thing he said, it's been a long week. <laughs> And it certainly had because they had won a huge game against North Carolina after beating Virginia. So they were really up and they go to Boston College where Tom O'Brien had left to come here for. They lose that ball game, just a, a crushing defeat for them. And then they're looking down the gun barrel of having to defeat Clemson and Maryland in their last two games to become bowl eligible. And here's a big run by Washington. So the scenario is, you know, you really got an uphill battle. They're really handing it to Clemson. If they beat Maryland here next week, they get to go to a bowl today is salvaging their season. Building for next year. Yeah. You've got a junior quarterback. You've got junior runner. You've got four linemen that'll come back. You've got a lot of experience around you. And those are the things that NC State will look for. They'll look to this team for next season. Now, I know that they're getting tired of looking for the next season, but you have to keep in mind, too, the ACC is full of a lot of good football teams, and you can throw NC State into that bunch. And just think of the number of guys they have coming back on defense. All the guys that have experience, the people that get healthy. Washington, great job of breaking tackles, and North Carolina State has just outwilled Clemson today. Now, and right now, that will is is the difference from the beginning of the game and the running game getting up in there that there, been, there's been poor tackling but a lot of that poor tackling is a result of what you just mentioned there Washington and Creasy getting after it running hard it will be second and a yard this has just been a whipping there's no other way to look at it after Clemson had the early three nothing lead and go back to that first series Craig where Clemson had a shot at a touchdown and they were stopped and had to settle for a field goal. Yep. It was a huge momentum shift for NC State. Washington again. That should be enough for a first down. I always hated that play. You ask a running back to go one direction and stop and then come right back. When I got started, I didn't stop until I was on the ground tackle. 
Well, you know what? You know, you talk about NC State and the success they're having. Rumors are that Urban Meyer is going to take the Ohio State job. Already putting his chat tonight. Today. He has tonight. John Tenuta mentioned in those rumors he used to coach at Ohio State in the secondary. He's from two miles from that stadium. You know, and, and you know, John has said no, he has not spoken to Urban Meyer. But the success Mike Archer has had here and John Tenuta, the chemistry they have there with those two guys, if they could keep John here, it sure would be a bonus. Washington again. Well, certainly North Carolina State would be favored next week in their home finale against a Maryland team that has seen their season go downhill. But you never know. Uh, they're going to have to come out and win it. Nobody's going to hand it to them. Well, the, the thing about it that you like their chances next week of not having another one of those bolts, it's down week time. Right. Is they will be at home and they run the ball better at home. And we showed that number earlier. It's like five yards per carry here. To two. To two on the road. So, you know, that that's a big plus. And O'Brien, I know, they, they're, they're bound to not sleep this week with giddiness, you know, if they hold on to this thing. I mean, this is the number seven team in the country, a team that has lost only once. It, as a player for NC State for a moment, I'll talk about their mindset. They will they will have a a, a spring in their step. They'll be excited about the meeting. You know, they'll be it's it's Thanksgiving coming up. It's it's a good time. Now if you put on a Clemson jersey, you got oh my gosh, three weeks in a row. What are we doing here? What's happened? It's not all about Sammy Watkins. Be nice to get him back healthy, but uh, they they will have to do a whole lot of soul searching to get the momentum going again. And now you're going to have to look at a couple of tough games coming up for Clemson. They have to conclude the regular season and play in the ACC championship game. They're not going to be an easy path for them. And, and, and that concluding of that, it means at South Carolina. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, you got to go play the Gamecocks. You're going to have to use uh, all your emotion up in that one. Well, maybe that's the plus too. That you know, the, the the silver lining to that is, they they can't sulk this week. They've got Thanksgiving week to get ready for a rivalry in South Carolina. And with any luck, they'll have Sammy Watkins back, who, for my money, is the best player in the country. NC State to kick it away here. 7:24 to go in the game. Nice high pooch punt. And nobody there. It was a beautiful kick. They couldn't cover it. Nobody could locate the ball. A 36 yard kick that rolls into the end zone. And Clemson will start from the 20 with 7.15 to go. I think it's just being small in the field. You know, sometimes I know what receivers do before they do it. And it allows me to play fast and allows me to play physical and be a ball hawk. You know, speed kills. So I think it's going to be fun for me. I'm going to enjoy it. David Amerson has dominated the numbers for defensive backs this year. He has a four interception lead on his closest rival. He has broken the school record that was set back in 1938. Didn't know anybody could have possibly intercepted 10 passes in 1938. Wasn't sure they threw 10 in 1938. Now the ball comes loose as Cole Stout is in for the first time. And Manning ripped the ball out after the receiver made the catch. But Manning has just had an exceptional season and is now within three of the all-time NCAA record. So Cole Stout is welcomed with a shot right in the kisser. Ooh. A little late. And that was middle linebacker Audie Cole. Stout, the son of former NFL quarterback Cliff Stout. And there's Bellamy. Well, it's been a, an interesting day. I saw where Penn State held on and beat Ohio State. How about that? Michigan, big over Nebraska. Big 
And we did that game last week. Michigan went to Illinois and won nicely. Their defense, man, I'm telling you, it's unbelievable. What difference. a turnaround. What a difference. Stop on the read option, and Bellamy tripped as soon as he got it. I think the other factor for Clemson, they've had three offensive linemen injured today. They were already missing Phillip Price. Are they going to be able to get those guys back for their stretch run? Clemson has only rushed for 27 yards on 25 carries. Oh, man. Stout out in the flat. They'll pick out a couple as Bellamy makes the catch coming out of the backfield. But you got to take your hat off to the NC State defense. They were exceptionally well prepared for this. They felt like coming in, they had a good feel for formations and tendencies and plays coming from certain formations. And when defensive coaches get a feel for it, they coach their players. You have to have smart players who understand it. And they've executed tonight. Beautiful kick. Graham just lets it go and it sails into the end zone. That was crushed. 59 yards by the ACC's leading punter, Dawson Zimmerman. Welcome back to the ACC on ESPN. It has been a stunner here in Raleigh, North Carolina this afternoon. North Carolina State leading Clemson 37 to 6. Tyler Brocious is the new quarterback for the Wolfpack, and he hands off to Curtis Underwood, number three. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. And if you had expected what the quarterbacks were going to be able to do in this game, the, the yardage is almost equal. But look at the touchdown to interception. Yeah, that interception, turning the ball over, and, and a, a lot of those yards by Taj Boyd were thrown up and caught by DeAndre Hopkins and, and almost a Hail Mary variety for him. Mike Glennon made the plays in the first half in the second quarter when he had to. When he was given the opportunity, he made the plays. And in the last three games coming into this one, Craig, he had one touchdown pass and four interceptions. So to go 3-0 and on this one was just remarkable and exactly what the doctor ordered. Underwood again and Corey Crawford makes the tackle on him as we approach the four-minute mark. Time in the game where kids who don't get to see a whole lot of time get to play. Yeah, and you know you like that. These guys, they work just as hard as the yep. starters. Second and third teamers, they want a chance to get in and do their thing. It's all good if you're NC State. It's all bad if you're Clemson. And every once in a while, you find somebody that you didn't know might be a gamer. Yep. Third down, draw play, Underwood trying to get to the sticks at the 30, doesn't quite make it. And now for our ACC update, brought to you by Dr. Pepper 10. Virginia Tech wins on Thursday night. Georgia Tech hangs on this afternoon. Maryland's woes continue. Miami, 6-3. to three. Whoa. How about, how about Notre Dame, 13-7 with Isn't Boston College? 13-7, yeah. jeez. Man, Wake Forest, they've kind of had their up and down year as well. Yep. Tom O'Brien's going to be tough to force a smile out of that guy. He is stoic on the <laughs> sideline, but he's smiling on the inside, I tell you that. <laughs> Guaranteed he is. <laughs> and and, and Dabo Sweeney, State. boy, I, I mean, he's... Time out of the half. This is a, is a miserable afternoon for Clemson. But he has a talented football team more than capable of recovering Thanksgiving week. Oh, absolutely. 
Tonight on the ESPN Networks, we'll start it off at 7 o'clock. LSU Ole Miss, then at 8 o'clock on either ABC or ESPN3. You'll see number 5 Oklahoma at Baylor in regional action at 1015. Back on ESPN, we have more action from the Pac-12. Number 9, Stanford against Cal in what has come to be known as the big game. Well, and, and you know what? It's a beauty contest right now. We've got Alabama and Oregon right now fighting to try to replace Oklahoma State at number two. And so Oregon needs to go out, and while they have a good opponent in USC, not eligible to play in the Pac-12 South to represent for the conference championship, they got to thump USC. That's not going to be easy. Matt Barkley's really good. No, and now it's not only just win, you have to have style points on top of it, right? Yes, it is. Fair catch made at the 32-yard line. 38-yard kick by Bauman. 235 left to go in the ball game. I think I think the Oregon Ducks and Chip Kelly's team is playing as well as they did last year at the end in the national championship game. Their defense has really come on strong and playing fast. Their offense, multiple, multiple explosive players on that offense. Are we looking at a rematch in the national championship game, do you think? Well, I think, you know, it's, it's certainly you can build a, the case for Alabama. Alabama's sitting there. They've lost to the number one team, LSU. They beat Arkansas. They, they, they would have survived the, of the body of work of the SEC. And I know some people don't like hearing that, but it's the truth. Well, this, of course, will change because Oklahoma State lost last night. Clemson losing this afternoon and still more action to come tonight of course look at Arkansas thumping Mississippi State 44 to 10 mm. two things there Arkansas is really good right now and Mississippi State a team that I thought was for sure going to be a top 15 team boy they've fallen apart all right let's get some more information Robert Flores in the studio Robert well Craig Texas Tech has also fallen apart since beating Oklahoma 0 and 3 now staring at a fourth consecutive loss James Franklin go ahead touchdown Missouri up 31 27 under two minutes to go in Columbia Missouri yeah you know they just kind of Robert they kind of lost their confidence after Oklahoma and, and, and got thumped and young football team trying to find their identity right now stout throws underneath complete to Brandon Ford the junior who they are expecting to have a brilliant senior season. He's a good player. Whitey Jordan came in the booth before the game. Whitey is with Clemson and longtime affiliation with the Clemson Tigers. He was my offensive coordinator at SMU my senior year. I tell Whitey all the time, Dickerson and I made him look really good on third and long. <laughs> I didn't realize you guys had a third and long that year. <laughs> it would be third and ten, and he was the coordinator. Jeff Bowers, the old longtime coach at Southern Miss, was our right. quarterback coach. Jeff wanted to throw the ball. Of course, Whitey was like, look, let's run. Let, we're going to run the option here. It's third and ten. We can get the first down on third on the option. Now Whitey, he helps with Dabo Sweeney, has him run the officiating crew at practice. And, the, and now that they're the, one of the least penalized teams out there, it's like, you know, Hey, man, we ought to get a raise over here. Well, he deserves credit for that, doesn't he? Stout under pressure, hit and goes down. From behind, Michael Peake, number 45, got a piece of him. That is the sixth sack for North Carolina State. What a performance. Peake, a freshman linebacker, 16 to 15. Yeah, you know what, this, this front four... And, and even the fifth when the linebackers were able to come have been just outstanding against Clemson's offensive line. And that's another problem with having a freshman Bellamy in there for pass protection. Usually those guys are not good pass blockers and they'll get their quarterback laid out. Man, they, they, you know, the last time 30 point loss in the Tangerine Bowl. Mm. There's gonna be a lot of look in the, look in the mirror for Clemson. And yeah, they're going to have to go back and recalculate after yeah, this. No doubt. And they got to get ready for South Carolina because 
you know, South, South Carolina is sitting over there, and Ellis Johnson, their defensive coordinator, is watching this film. He's going to say, okay, look what NC State did against Clemson. Show them the blueprint. Yes, sir. And it's, it's a copycat game. Somebody does something that works. The next guy does it the next week. Stout underneath, incomplete, intended for Ford. 134 to go. Stout's just a freshman out of Dublin, Ohio. He battled it out with Boyd in the spring, and Boyd barely won. And they told Stout to come in and work hard during the summer, work hard during the fall. He was going to have a shot at it. He did, but was held off by Boyd. They are 0-2 on fourth down today, taking another shot here on fourth and 18. And they've got the first down and more. Ford dives for the end zone. They're going to mark him out of bounds outside the two. Nice throw by Stout. Yeah, you know, it's, and those are the little things that you go into the spring workouts, winter workouts, and you're like, oh, man, you know what? Look what Stout did. He's a good player, and you got Ford getting a little confidence in what he did. Very few missed tackles that we've seen in the secondary, but this is a result of some guys playing that yeah. maybe hadn't been playing. And Clemson gets its first touchdown of the game with 122 left as Bellamy bursts into the end zone. Uh, you mentioned it earlier. Who would have guessed 37 to 13? We'd be talking about NC State and not Clemson, the number seven team in the country. Point after is good. But NC State is going to go to six and five. Clemson is going to fall to nine and two. After an undefeated start, they ran into Georgia Tech in Atlanta, struggled against Wake Forest, and got whacked tonight. Wow, look at those offensive numbers and, and how far off they were. The domination in the, in the rushing department. And the rushing is the biggest thing, 34 yards. And they had Andre Ellington back. And yeah. that, that, that was the big missing piece yep. when they lost at Georgia Tech. Exactly. Got him back last week and thought maybe they had something going there just never happened. I mean, they, they never found any kind of rhythm in this game. Well, it doesn't matter how good your offense is. If you turn the ball over and the defense is going to give up 37 points, you're going to be in a world of hurt. It'd be interesting to see this week how they come out with those injuries along the offensive line and the Sammy Watkins story. Will he be able to come back and play? You know they didn't want to take a chance with him today. The last thing you need is to take one of the best players on the planet and trot him out there and re-injure something. Yeah. So I think that was a great decision. Yeah, it was. Keeping his best interest in mind. Virginia playing Florida State. That's going to be an interesting deal there. If Virginia loses, Virginia Tech clinches. And they would meet Clemson for the ACC championship. Virginia, I'm so impressed with what Mike London's done for that football team. Yes. A couple weeks ago did uh, Virginia and Miami. Michael Rocco, they finally left him in, let him be the quarterback. They did. They stopped rotating quarterbacks. Big offensive line, good looking line. They can run the football. The defense is big and strong. They're, they're, they're going to be hard to beat. They're good. Yeah, Florida State's going to have to play a good game. And Florida State has gotten better. They got off to a slow start after a great game against Oklahoma. Of course, you go back to that old line, Craig. If yeah. you have two quarterbacks, do you really even yeah. have one? Yeah, that's exactly right. And Florida State's defense is playing well. Yes, they like, are. Oh, it seems like we were probably there two or three weeks ago. It seems like a year ago. But. <laughs> it does. NC State expecting the onside kick. This gives both teams a chance to work on this a little bit. Manning is right there to snatch it out of the air. Wow, what a great play. You, you know, those guys on that front line are taught. You've got to go for it. And Manning, a linebacker. How about that? 
Yeah, they tell you not to wait for it. Go up there and get that ball. Hawkins made a heck of a hit on him. But Manning snatched it onto the air and held on. And now NC State's going to be able to kill the clock with 122 to go in the ball game. It's funny how certain teams are able to dominate the others. Tom O'Brien has beaten North Carolina five straight times every year that he has been here he has won that rivalry game but this is his first victory against Clemson and it came on a day when he had to have it this team needed to win so they can beat a chance to beat Maryland next week and be bowl eligible you, it's hard now to sneak up on a Marine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> He's not <smart. laughs> nah, just here. Yeah. Give me the time. Uh, right. no, you guys have fun? <laughs> All right. <laughs> you almost have to squeeze it out of him, you know? <laughs> That's priceless. Well, good for him. <laughs> and a tremendous round of applause. From the NC State faithful who saw their Wolf Pack come through today. Tom O'Brien and Dabo Sweeney exchanging handshakes. Good show of sportsmanship in the middle of the field. What a win for NC State. 37 to 13. You know, and you know, it's it's a blow for the ACC, though. I mean, it, this conference, John Swafford, the ACC commissioner, we met back in the in the summer and we were talking, and they needed a bell cow. They needed someone to break through and have a great season. Virginia Tech now carrying that banner, that mantle. They've got to have a strong finish because the perception of the ACC is it's not a great conference. People just don't understand. This is a good football conference. A lot of good teams, and today an example of that, of what NC State can do. A good football team, not a great record. And maybe the biggest series of all, which will be lost in the recap of this game, was when Clemson couldn't get it in on the drive early in the ball game. They had to settle for a field goal, and they went up 3-0. It was virtually all North Carolina State after that. They had a brilliant day. Thanksgiving week. Look forward to seeing you. All right, pal. Once again, our final score, NC State 37, Clemson 13. For Craig James and our entire crew, this is Mike Patrick saying so long from Raleigh, North Carolina. Now we send you back to the studio.